Hello again. This here is a Minivac 6010. It is essentially a revision of the famous Minivac 601, but with a few quality of life improvements. It includes more reliable relays with protective covers, and also better and beefier internal components to protect circuitry in case you wire something wrong. This model here was released one year later after the original one, in 1962. It also included extra patch cords, capacitors, resistors, diodes, all for extra features. While not as successful as the earlier version, this version was more successful in the corporate marketplace. This minivac was purchased at auction and it got all the original documentation. So let's go take a look at that. So this here is the entire stack of literature and this top booklet is the maintenance manual. It describes how to, you know, repair all the mechanical parts, the relays, the stuff underneath the board and all that sort of cool stuff. Here's a bit of promotional material slipped into the packaging. I just love this first sentence. A space capsule heads for the moon. This was printed in 1966, three years before a space capsule headed to the moon. This kit was manufactured almost 10 years before it went to the moon, and the promotional material had to change during its lifetime to reflect that. Isn't that crazy? An interesting bit about this fallout are the other computers that Scientific Development Corporation were making. There's apparently a massive logic computer called the NORDAC-2 that I would love to get my hands on. There was also a paper trainer called the MINI-DAC-201. Here it is pictured next to an old adding machine. This would be a pretty cool project to recreate. This foldout here contains some errata and extra notes not put into the original manuals. Remember, this was well before the days of PDF and web pages. It also contains some information about the creation of logic gates, which will be useful for us later on. Here are the four printed books for the minivac. The actual books number 1 through 7. Uh, these particular ones are written for the 601, so there are a couple things we can't do, but we'll get to that later on in the series. There are seven books in total, and each one has experiments that we can recreate and play with. You know, one thing, I just absolutely love these old illustrations and manuals like these. They always look so goofy, but, you know, in the good way. Now that we got the paperwork out of the way, let's look at three ways that we can input information into the minivac. We have push buttons, the slide switches, and the rotary dial. Firstly, these are the push buttons. They seem to be made of a red backlight material and are extremely smooth. The travel isn't very far, and the push buttons are very quiet. Take a look at these labels here. The lettering is to aid putting circuits together, and the indicators are to tell you if the switch is normally open or closed. This side says NO, which is normally open, and this side says NC, which is normally closed. Uh, let me wire up a light to show you how this works. First, I wire up the center pole of the switch to positive. Next, I wire two lamps to ground. And lastly, I wire up the normally open side to one lamp, and then the normally closed side to the other lamp. When the button is pressed, we can see that the normally closed side becomes open, and the normally open side becomes closed. The fact that there are two sides to every switch on this computer is what makes the computing possible. Here are the slide switches. Unlike the push buttons, they don't have a normally open or normally closed state. They just connect to the common pin, here, to whichever side the switch is slid to. You may have noticed that there are two rows of holes on some switches. This is because those switches are double throw. This means that there are two sets of switches inside that get turned on or off simultaneously. But the power isn't connected between these two rows, so be aware of that. So let's start putting together the slide switch circuit. I begin by putting two lamps to ground.
Next, I connect one side of the slide switch to the first lamp. Then I connect the center pin to positive. And lastly, I connect the last lamp to the other side of the slide switch. There we go. Now, let's power it on and give it a test. So as you can see, if I slide back and forth, each lamp turns on respectively. Here's the rotary dial. On this piece of kit, I had to bend the motor back into place so it would make contact with the wheel inside. The motor can drive the dial, or you can manually rotate it yourself. We will investigate the latter. This pin here is the common pin of the dial, and each one of the holes on the dial correspond to that position. If you wanted the lamp to light when the position is at 10, we wire the lamp to ground, and then we wire the position 10 to the lamp. We wire the common to positive. We turn the dial, and there it is. The lamp is lit at position 10. So there you have it. Three ways they can input information into the minivac. There are a couple other ways. There's the, uh, there's the matrix, and then if you count the relays as separate switches, you can use the relays. But we'll cover the relays in the next video, and then I'll show you how you can use these relays to do math. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time.